Joining us for more of a discussion on that developing story is Rajiva Vijay Sinha, a well-known academic and politician of the Liberal Party of Sri Lanka. Also joining us right now is our very own Padma Rao, senior international correspondent with Vion. Thanks so much, both of you, for joining in on the conversation. Padma, I'll come to you first. Uh, you know, we've heard that uh, Mr. Sirisena's government came to power in Sri Lanka on the plank of improving rel relations with uh, India. Would you say that Mr. Sirisena's government has been able to achieve that to some extent? Well, uh, Aisha, I'm glad you brought up that question right at the very beginning because what has happened is that uh, though the intention may have been there, uh, things have moved rather slowly on uh, the front of improving relations with India, uh, largely because uh, Sri Lanka continues to be, uh, you know, under great debt vis-a-vis uh, -vis China. And as you know, uh, as we all know, China and India uh, see each other as uh, as strategic uh, sort of rivals in the Indian Ocean region. So, no, I would say that not as much has happened. Certainly, there have been, uh, you know, vi uh, visible signs of, of, uh, of the government in Sri Lanka making every attempt to do so. Uh, you know, first visits by Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe, first visit to India by President Sirisena. But no, uh, as far as Delhi is concerned, it seems to be more of a wait and watch policy to see who blinks first. All right, uh, let's go across to Mr. Vijay Sena. He joins us as well right now. Uh, Mr. Vijay Sena, I'm sure you heard what uh, Padma Rao, our senior international correspondent, had to say. Would you be in agreement to say that India is going to adopt a, or is rather ad adopting a wait and watch policy when it comes to Sri Lanka in terms of uh, the warmth that is being shown towards Sri Lanka vis-a-vis -vis the entire China and uh, South Asia region? Well, I think India is adopting a wait and see, which I think is a mistake. I mean, I think one of the problems over the last few years has been that India seemed to be speaking too much. I have the greatest admiration for your foreign ministry. And I think your foreign ministry was very, very wary from everything I've heard about India seeming to plunge direct into the Western line on Sri Lanka. They did this by voting against us twice in the UN uh, uh, Human Rights Council, and this created a lot of bad blood. Now, the real tragedy is that the activities of the West, I think, drove Rajapaksa to seek a lot of support from China, which China gave willingly. I don't blame India for this, because India actually was quite positive about Sri Lanka in 2009, 2010. And as you know, the Hambantara the court was first offered to India. And uh, one of the high commissioners told me perhaps they made a mistake in not accepting it. But because India has proceeded, China was able to step in and prove a very solid ally. Now, in the present context, the present government, not so much President Sirisena, who's a wiser man, but the prime minister and uh, the foreign minister tended to be very pro-Western and seemed to assume that India would stay favorable if La, uh, Sri Lanka appeased the West. Now, these are all nonsense, because as we know, uh, the West loves Ranil Vikramasinghe, but it loves money more. And Hillary Clinton has been the recipient of enormous amounts of money from the former terrorist grouping, the LTT and its supporters. And I think we'd have a very dangerous time if she had won election. And I think Sri Lanka was very foolish to put all its eggs into the Western basket instead of playing a more positive cultivation of both India and China. President Sirisena's manifesto, as you know, and I was one of those who contributed to write it, said very clearly that Sri Lanka would put Asia first. And we do believe that we should have very good relations with both India and China. But of course, we know that the West wants to drive a you know, wedge between both in, uh, India and China and between Sri Lanka by saying you have to pick one or the other. We don't want to do that, but we have to recognize the fact that China was a vital ally during difficult right. times. And at the moment, when the West didn't really provide any money to this government, China stepped in and you know, filled the breach. So you can quite understand why you know, China feels there should be some gratitude. And when our finance minister and our foreign minister behaved very rudely to China, of right. course they got upset. All right. Uh, what we've seen, uh, you know, recently Chinese authorities uh, uh, questioning, uh, in a way, what is happening in terms of the Chinese ambassador last week criticizing his host government in Colombo for saying that Chinese loads were expensive. 
The Chinese authorities are not known to interfere or speak vocally, really speaking, on term, uh, you know, on comment on other governments' perceptions. What is your take on that comment by uh, the Chinese ambassador to Colombo? Well, I think the Chinese are simply playing the game that the Sri Lankan government succumbed to because the West was relentlessly critical of Sri Lankan governments, appalling say so, hypocritically so, and you know, Mangala Samarila and Ranil Vikramasinghe, you know, rolled up and took it. And then when that's happening, to have a, a minister insulting the Chinese who actually stepped into the breach when America did not provide much support to this government and indeed has continued to persecute us internationally, I think it was perfectly correct for the Chinese ambassador to make his views known. It wasn't an attack. It was a defense. And I think the Sri Lankan government, I mean, Mangala Samari is really unfit to be our foreign minister. And I'm waiting very much for the date when the president realizes it that he's a disaster. I mean, the president, has, I think, realized that Trump may be a good debt to Sri Lanka, where Samarira sort of expressed the fact that he was deeply disappointed. The trouble with both Vikramasinghe and Samarira is they don't understand the word. So they plunge all their eggs into particular baskets. Right. Vikramasinghe actually spoke in favor of England remaining with the, uh, with the European Union, you know, at the time of the Brexit referendum. And they seem to think that carrying favor with the current leaders of the West will actually benefit Sri Lanka, when, as we know perfectly well, the West has never been a reliable ally. India knows this perfectly well. You, after all, one of the biggest victims of America in the Cold War in the 80s, when China was a great friend. So I do hope that the wisdom of your South Bloc, your, your immensely experienced uh, foreign ministry, will trump the particular predilections of individual prime ministers, whether it be Manmohan Singh and Sonia Gandhi in the past or Narendra Modi now, right. because I think that would lead to disaster for India. All right, uh, let's let's talk more about the India factor then. Let's go back to Padma Rao on that note. Padma, uh, as uh, we're seeing and we're talking about over here, China and Sri Lanka's relationship or uh, perhaps a more cozy relationship that has existed between the two has been a cause of concern for India. But in terms of how things stand right now, how do you perceive India reacting to the fact that Mahinda Rajapaksha, uh, Rajapaksa pardon me, was uh, invited for a week long trip to Beijing. I'm certain that India is watching very closely and this is perhaps a reason uh, or a bone of contention perhaps further with uh, India and Sri Lanka. Yes, Aisha, unfortunately I missed uh, most of what Rajiva was saying and he's a very eloquent speaker. So, uh, you know, that's a matter of great regret to me. But uh, certainly, yes, New Delhi is watching very closely because, uh, you know, this means uh, for the very first time this is a, there is a visible sign that uh, Beijing is reaching out to what is the opposition in Sri Lanka and also the opposition, uh, within the opposition to uh, uh, the former president who was not known to have the best of relations with uh, New Delhi. But on the other hand, President Rajapaksa, former President Rajapaksa, is also the man who has to undoubtedly be credited and all Sri Lankans of any political view uh, continue to do that till date, uh, including the current Prime Minister and the President, that he was the first President to be credited with actually ending the war, the 30-year-long civil war in Sri Lanka, and, uh, you know, bringing about extremely rapid development in the, in the North and the East, which were completely rapid uh, by the war. So, uh, uh, you know, and during that process, that is when the relationship with China uh, took on, uh, you know, the went from strength to strength. So, uh, in a sense, uh, uh, but, but this is the first time, so far it was a trade relationship, an investment relationship between China and Sri Lanka, and also the Chinese provided weapons to the Sri Lankan army to be able to defeat the Sri Lanka, uh, the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam. But this is the first time in the uh, 25 odd years that I have followed Sri Lanka, that I am noticing uh, Sri, uh, China actually making an attempt to, uh, you know, somehow address uh, its concerns or to, to reach out to what is the political opposition in democratic Sri Lanka. And that is certainly a matter of concern. In fact, it should be a matter of concern for the Sri Lankans themselves. Uh, Mr. Vijay Sinha, what do you say to that? India should be concerned about the overtures being made of, by Beijing towards Mr. Mahinda Rajapaksa. But as Padma is pointing out, it could also be a matter of concern for Sri Lanka itself. Let's have your comments on that. 
Well, I wouldn't call it a matter of concern. I would say it is something to take into account in formulating your own policy. Now, everybody knows perfectly well that uh, a lot of people who are anti Mahindra Rajapaksa in the run-up to the last election were closely approached by governments, both the Indian and the uh, Americans, the Americans more blatantly, uh, because they wanted to topple Rajapaksa. Now, I think at the moment, you have a situation where it's not a question of others aiding the top link of this government. This government is doing pretty well in actually making itself so unpopular that if there were an election, it is likely, something that seemed totally unlikely uh, uh, you know, 18 months ago, that uh, Rajiv Baksa's new party would do very well. So I think the real problem is you have a situation where you have what I would call a moderate president, but between him and Rajapaksa, there's a lot of bad blood, and I think it's important that they should start talking to each other. Uh, and he leads a government headed by a very pro-Western party, which is largely out of touch with the Sri Lankan people, or certainly its current leadership is. It actually has some very decent people in the old Senanayaka tradition, but they don't have a chance at the moment. Right. And you have what I would call the Yankee Dicky type of what happened in the 80s, when, as you know, India was treated very badly and was the victim of alliances between uh, the United States and Sri Lanka. So I think it behoves India now to think not that they should be worried about China, but they should also start thinking about what is best for the Sri Lankan people. Now, India stood by us solidly. I mean, I know that in the 80s, in a reaction to the West, it supported the terrorists, and that was a great disgrace, and India suffered badly with the murder of Rajiv Gandhi. Right. But India since then solidly supported the Rajapaksa government to get rid of the LTT. Right. But India made it very clear that we should have acted in favor of the Tamil people. And that was a great mistake that Rajapaksa did, although as Patma said, he did a lot of development in the North. He didn't actually involve the Tamil people enough in decision making. Now, India, while obviously concerned, has also to express All concern right. for the Tamil people as a whole. So I think India should also start talking to uh, mind the Rajapaksa and the current opposition, not in terms of being anti the government, but in terms of trying to understand what the Sri Lankan people. They don't want terrorism back, and that, I'm afraid, is what some elements in the West, thank God Hillary Clinton was defeated, the use of terrorists has been appalling all over the world. Right. But I think we need to make sure that we don't get terrorism back, and India should solidly support the Sri Lankan polity that is against the revival of terrorism. Okay, so strong words there from uh, Rajiva Vijay Sinha. I thank you both, uh, Padma Rao and Rajiva, for joining us. Uh, unfortunately, we have run out of time on this segment, but uh, important and pertinent points made there both by both our guests. We're going to take a quick break on that note. We'll be back with more on the other side. Stay with us.